Hi guys, this video is brought to you by outtalk.co.uk for your post, pre-match and Sheffield Wednesday discussions with fellow Wednesdayites. Hello guys and welcome to this video. Now I have just listened to the Wednesday week on the financial fair play with what's going on and I recommend anybody who's really interested in what's going on with financial fair play and what the rules are and what actually is going to be happening, listen to it. They make it very clear. They make it very informative. They let you know. Like, one of the big things I didn't know is that the whole system where you get fined is going to, to a point. And so if you do go up and you do well and say you come back down, if you're still not sorting out your losses and stuff the EFL could literally turn around and say you're not playing a single game next season until you sort this out so in theory your club's abolished until you get your financial uh, system sorted now this is in place due to the fact that QPR royally royally just took the piss when it they had to do theirs and it's shown that fine don't work and the whole system in itself is a bit of a joke and it it got built as we are doing this so we can dot clubs getting into financial trouble and it's more built that the premiership clubs don't really want any of the championship clubs to come up and compete with them and that's the kind of thing it, that's what they said at the end of it so Long story short, we have a 9 million hole we need to fill. Uh, either that's either selling players, loaning them out, and going from there. I didn't realise... This is, this is coming from somebody who looks at figures in Peter on the Wednesday week, who was superb in what he said. Everything he said was fantastic. And it... It said to me, some of the things that he said, like some of the idea where he said, loan out Fez, then, then see what happens there. And you've got this thing, a lot of people will see loaning out Fez or selling Fez as uh, we're not going to do anything. Uh, one of the ones was selling Winnell. I know me and a mate of mine, Adam, will be kind of annoyed with that because we will want to see what he could do. But in terms of finding the hole that we need to find, it needs to happen. Like there's certain players who are on last years of their contract this year, i.e. Bannon, i.e. Westwood. Westwood, I wouldn't mind us actually turning around and saying, thank for your service, try and sell him on, get some money for him, because we have three very good keepers in that position. And I know a lot of people are going to turn around and say, well, wow, Smith's not ready, Dawson's not ready. When do they become ready then? When are you going to play them? We're already showing that we're looking at youth team prospects more than anything. And people are still on this whole thing, are we in a transfer embargo? And we kind of are, uh, until they've given all facts and figures out at the end of the uh, July, we won't know. But like a lot of people have said, end of July, that pointless because we can't do anything at set loans then because of the transfer window shutting. Now, you can make loans until the 31st of August, and I think we'll see a couple of loans in. I think we'll see a couple of loans out as well before we loan players in. And it, it's an interesting one. I am I personally think Josh Luca is just going to use our youth team. He's just going to promote within on low wages, see what they can do and go from there. And do it that way instead of having to bring players in. Because I think he prefers that model. You look at some of the clubs he's been at, this is what he's done. He has used the Youth Academy. And whenever he's done a Youth, youth the Youth Academy, they've done well. So I kind of feel that's what's going to happen. But you never know what's going to happen until, well, it happens. So have a listen to the Wednesday Week podcast with the Financial Fair Play one. Uh, I think this is the third one they've done on it. Have a listen don't go all doom and gloom and go, oh, we're screwed, we're never going to make it. It's not that case. We have a chairman that's fully committed. He noticed there was a problem. He brought in a cheap, 
a cheap as Zack. A lot of people really hated her and didn't want her in, but so far she's doing the right things. And let's just remember, he's here for the long haul. If he's going to do this to get things out of the way so he can start spending money again, fantastic. But until then, we need to balance the books. And at the end of the day, people have to remember Sheffield Wednesday Football Club is a business. And a lot of people forget that our football clubs are businesses. They are not, I repeat, not just our football clubs. They are businesses. And we need to understand that. And if this is what we've got to do and we go with a, a this season, a prediction of mid-table, outside chance of playoffs, then fine. Go for it. And like people have said with the likes of Forest now spend a lot of money, they got to make sure this goes right and then balance the books as well. Because the last thing they needed to have another transfer embargo or another situation where they were in the crap. And we had that whole situation where we went, we put, we went big, didn't work. So we now have to go with the realization that that didn't work and go from there. And we do have players on big contracts, so we need to trim the wave budget. But I, all in purposes, I will put a link in the bio, or I may put a link somewhere up in the cards, uh, whatever, to the Wednesday Week podcast because it was a fantastic episode. Uh, always did, but this one really helps you understand what what's going on at the club financially in a sense from a fan point of view without the club actually saying anything see you in the next one don't forget to have your say at altalk.co.uk after the match